and welcome back to the BrotherhoodofGaming.com review show. Video game reviews on a budget. I'm your host, Eugene Morris. And this review is brought to you by the Nintendo Switch. Because why should Will be the only one to have all the fun? A big thank you to my wife, who helped me find one at a normal price. Since this world went upside down, getting one of these things was a trial within itself. By the way, with all the craziness going on out there, I hope you're all staying safe during these difficult times. Now, I've had had the Switch for about a month now, and I absolutely love the thing. I really enjoy its versatility, as it's perfect for the big screen at home, and during those 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. breaks at work. One of the first games I got for the Switch was Super Mario Odyssey. Well, that and Super Mario Kart Deluxe, because I had to, right? Turned out it was perfect timing, as Mario is back in the news. Thanks to the recent announcements made at the Super Mario Bros. 35th Anniversary Special, there's a bunch of new Mario content coming out of this device. Yeah, they're just re-releases, but hey, it's new for the Switch at least. I, for one, am really stoked that Super Mario 3D World is being ported over to the Wii U, because I really enjoyed that game. Of course, there is also Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now, full disclosure, the Mario series was absolutely my favorite games as a kid and as a teenager. But during my college years, I followed Lara Croft at the PlayStation, so I missed out on a lot of those 3D titles. I did not get back into Mario until I got a Wii and played Super Mario Galaxy 2. But now I have no excuse. I can now play Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and the first Mario Galaxy, all in one nice little collection. While supplies last. Yeah, they're pulling a whole Disney vault thing here, and it's a little weird. But hey, the original Super Mario All-Stars is now part of the SNES Online Collection for the Switch. That's super cool too. When I was a kid, that game was my jam, as I logged in a huge amount of hours playing those four, um, three games in that collection. Speaking of collections, hey Square Enix, next year is Tomb Raider's 25th anniversary, and y'all better come through the goods. Damn it, I probably shouldn't get my hopes up, we're probably just gonna get a cell phone game and die if we're lucky. I know the game is three years old, but hey, here's my chance to finally take a look at some games I wanted to play when they first came out. So without any further ado, here's my review of Super Mario Odyssey. The story of this game is the story of pretty much every Mario game. Bowser kidnaps Princess Peach and it's up to Mario to stop his would-be attempt to marrying her. I always wondered why Bowser was so gun-ho on taking Peach as his bride. Is it a power play to become the new king of the Mushroom Kingdom? Is he trying to force Peach to become the stepmom of his son? I don't know. If anyone out there has any answers, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, helping Mario out this time is Cappy, a sentient being from the Cap Kingdom. Along with Peach, Bowser took Cappy's sister, Tiara. WHAT AN ASSHOLE! Mario and Cappy team up to take down the King of the Koopa and save the damsels in distress. Now the story in a Mario game is not all that important, as this series is really mostly powered by its gameplay, and the fun here is in all the worlds you get to visit and the inhabitants that you get to meet. The worlds are all unique, from the good old Mushroom Kingdom, to a Wood Kingdom, the Moon, this weird food place, and a kingdom that looked like it was ripped right out of Game of Thrones. But my favorite, undoubtedly, the Metro Kingdom, and its capital, New Donk City. This place is just chop full of classic Mario and Donkey Kong references, including one of the best video game levels I've ever played. Last but not least, of course, is Pauline, Mario's original girlfriend and now mayor of New Donk City. Pauline is awesome. You save her and you get a festival in your honor. Unfortunately, while there is a two-player option in which one player can play as Mario and the other can play as Cappy, this is very much Mario's adventure. Other beloved characters like Luigi, Yoshi, and Toad are all in the game, but they're really just glorified cameos. It's a shame the game couldn't find more for them to do. In the end, though, the story is a simple yet fun blast with plenty of homages and dedications to the series it represents. This is quite possibly the most open-worldish Super Mario game yet. Other 3D Mario games that I've played played it fairly linear, but they managed to expand on it here. Now, I'm not saying this game is like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but the game's kingdoms do present a pretty open sandbox for you to roam around in. When you first enter a world, of course, your main objective is to take down the boss that's causing trouble. But along the way, you have to collect these power moons that will power up your ship. Now, many of these power moons are straightforward for you to get, while others will require some extra work for you to get them. This is pretty common in 3D Mario games. And like those ones, getting all the moons here is not required in order for you to beat the game. However, there are secret levels that come after the game's initial ending. So that does serve as an incentive for you to collect them all. 
This can either be viewed as replayability or just an unnecessary collectathon. Now, the new big addition here for Mario is, of course, Cappy himself. With Cappy, you can throw him at enemies and activate switches. But the big thing here is that you can possess foes and objects. The possession gimmick is a lot of fun, especially when you're able to possess things like Fire Bros, Chain Chomps, and a big freaking T-Rex. That being said, though, he is meant to replace the legendary power-ups, which have always been a staple in Mario games. So here, there is no Star Man, no Fire Flowers, or Tanuki Suits, which is unfortunate. Now, you don't need them in this adventure, as Cappy more than makes up for them, but as an old Mario fan, I still found myself missing them. The closest we get is a heart power-up that you can use to fill up your health. Now, if you take enough hits or fall into a bottomless pit, you will die. But afterwards, you'll be brought back to the last checkpoint, which will cost you some coins. Collecting coins here is given more importance. Those are the exclusive purple ones that you can find in the levels. With these, you can go to shops to purchase extra suits, which there is a ton of them. Playing dress up can allow you to mix and match with some amusing outfits. Some areas will even require you to have a certain suit in order to access it. Hey, the Mario 64 model, nice. There is a great deal of stuff that you can do in these levels, from gliding, racing, and completing those retro levels, which are so damn cool. Ah, right in the nostalgia gland. Now let's talk about the controls. You can play the game with a traditional controller setup, but the game really does nudge you into the direction of using the motion controls. And yeah, Nintendo and their motion controls. With these, you can do many of Mario's traditional athletic moves more easily, which includes him throwing Cappy around in many different directions. So I do recommend that you play with the motion controls, because like I said, it just makes things a little easier. Shaking the controller up and down can get a bit awkward. For me, this gameplay was just a blast, but I will admit, and my wife even noticed this, this Mario adventure is a little on the easy side. I did beat the game fairly quickly. Now, I haven't collected all the Power Moons, I'm still working on that, but there have been more challenging Mario adventures that I have played. But the fun gameplay is what keeps me coming back to Odyssey. That and those cute outfits. Holy cow, the music in this game, especially from New Donk City, is so damn catchy. A nice feature is after you collect the CDs, you can play any tune you want at any time. Uh, until you die, unfortunately, and you'll have to reset it. But hey, that's a minor quibble. Some tunes I enjoy include Fossil Falls for its epicness, Bubble Lane for that laid-back beach feel, and the Steam Gardens, which has this hip late 60s, early 70s vibe to it. Was not expecting that for a forest level. The music in this game is all kinds of awesome. Super Mario Odyssey has the most realistic landscapes ever seen in a Mario game. Now they still manage to balance it out with a cartoony look of the main characters. The game just has that unique quality that many previous games don't have. The worlds do meet those standard tropes, meaning a forest level, a water level, an ice level, etc. But they're all visibly pretty, and some of them are even stunning. Definitely one of the nicest looking Mario games out there. So now we come to the final call. Is this game a buy or a sell? It has fun Mario sandbox gameplay, top-notch Nintendo presentation, tight controls with a lighter difficulty. I wholeheartedly admit I had a blast playing this game. From the look, the feel, the controls, this to me is what a 3D Mario game is supposed to be like. Now this game is not perfect, now, I mean what game is, but it does deliver on what's advertised. Now is it my personal favorite Mario game? Well, I wouldn't go that far. I'm still pretty old school, and the games like Super Mario Bros. 2, 3, and World still occupy the top spots for me. Is it my favorite 3D Mario game? At this time, I'd say so, but I still need to play the Mario games that are included in that 3D All-Stars collection, and I am looking forward to seeing how those turn out. All in all, if you have a Switch, this and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild are definitely games you should have on it. If not, you're missing out. Now here's hoping for a Super Mario Odyssey 2. You've been watching the BrotherhoodGaming.com show. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and like the video, and as always, keep on gaming.